Look, there are some absurd headlines today in relation to Peter Dutton and the Federal Coalition. One says, honeymoon continues for Albanese as Dutton's nightmare grows worse, unquote. The argument being that the coalition vote in this poll, news poll today, is at 31%. That's only 31% of the voting public want the coalition. But hang on a minute. On May 21, fewer than 33% wanted a Labor government. Now, admittedly, the Prime Minister says he has a mandate because he can command the numbers on the floor of the House of Representatives without the support of minor parties, and that is true. And we're told that Prime Minister Albanese is enjoying a, is enjoying a post-election wave of approval. Now, there is no doubt, rhetorically, Anthony Albanese has done very well. His dress, his appearance and his language have been very conciliatory and unifying. That's fine. What about the detail? The electorate aren't as impressed as the headlines would have you believe. The Labor vote is at 37%. That is, almost two thirds of the electorate don't want the Labor Party. I'm saying forget the polls. That's what Dutton must do. One significant figure in this poll about Dutton is that 22% are uncommitted. He could scoop them up if he shows courage and difference from the direction of the Labor Party because we should not be governing by polls. I have said, and it's very early times, this is going to come unstuck for Labor. The voice is a divisive issue. And Indigenous people are saying to me, what do they mean by a voice? I wasn't consulted, they say, and I'm not represented. Well, the other issue which will cause the collapse of this Labor government is this mistaken view that they can get to 82% of renewables by 2030, 82%. As Bjorn Lomborg wrote in the last week about this so-called climate change, quote, it's wildly overblown in the media, with every weather event turned into a televisual catastrophe. He says last year, the newspapers overflowed with stories of devastating hurricanes, yet 2021 had the fewest hurricanes globally since satellites started consistently monitoring the world in 1980. Writes Bjorn Lomberg, hundreds of deaths in Europe from heat waves topped the news for days, even though the data shows everywhere Many more people, 4.5 million globally, die from cold temperatures, often because of a lack of heating exacerbated by high energy prices, unquote. Writes Lomborg, who's actually in, in, believes in climate change, but he's totally opposed to the policies addressing the issue. Lomborg writes, the costs of the climate and environmental policies pushed at establishment talk fests are quickly becoming unbearable, unquote. Well, think of Albanese and Bowen and the Labor government. When Lomborg says, quote, for decades we've been told that ending fossil fuels is cost-free or even beneficial. Now we're starting to see the immense economic and security costs of such untethered promises, unquote. He mentions, of course, the World Economic Forum and the bankruptcy in Sri Lanka, quote, egged on by elite campaigners and the World Economic Forum. That's that great reset mob. He says Sri Lanka was urged to go organic. The government banned synthetic fertilisers, which come from fossil fuels, in April last year. This is Sri Lanka. Predictably, he says, and we've talked about this before here, food production collapsed and the Sri Lankan currency defaulted, unquote. 